Yeah, I'll start doing this too. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. In my ba'at, we are continuing in our studies of the work entitled Al-Arba'oon and Nawawiya, entitled the 40 Hadith of Imam and Nawawi. May Allah the exalted with so expanse of mercy upon his soul as he is passed in the year 676, Anno Hijri, 676 after the, the Hijrah. Um, we have entered into the second hadith in this work, and it is the renowned hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, and we have entered into our discussion concerning uh, concerning the shahadatain, concerning the, the testimony of the faith. And with that, in our previous sitting, we discussed La ilaha illallah and its meanings. We now come to the meaning of the testimony that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So with that, before we take what the explainer has offered, we pose that question to the floor. What does it mean when we say that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, very simply put, that he was divinely guided, inspired, and sent by Allah to humanity to bring them back to the true worship of the one true God. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, really? Tell you. Let's go with the explainer states. The meaning that the testimony, or the meaning of the testimony that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, is to love him above. All that is loved from the creation. To love him more than anything else within the creation of Allah. To obey him in what he has ordered. To abstain from what he has prohibited. To believe in whatever he has informed us of. Be it a matter that is of the past that is of the future or that is in our present whether we have witnessed this or we have not witnessed whatever this may be and to worship Allah congruent with what he has brought of truth and guidance so this is the meaning when we say that Muhammad sallallahu is the messenger of Allah one that we love him more than anything in Allah's creation. Two, we obey him in what he has ordered. Three, we abstain from what he has prohibited. Four, we believe whatever he has informed us of. And five, we worship Allah in the fashion that he has legislated, emulating the Messenger of Allah وسلم, throughout our worship. The experiment continues. Sincerity in action. For the sake of Allah and emulating or compliance with what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has brought, these two are requirements of the Shahadati. These two are requirements of the testimony that La ilaha illallah, there is no deed chain truth save Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Every action. That one seeks nearness to Allah through that action, then it becomes imperative that that action is performed purely, solely for the sake of Allah, and that it is in alignment with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What the what the explainer is saying here is that. In order for a deed to be accepted by Allah, it has to fulfill two conditions. What are the two conditions for a deed to be accepted by Allah? Whatever it is. Maybe it's your salah. Maybe it is your zakah. Maybe it is your fasting. Whatever it may be. Maybe it is your hajj. What are the two conditions for the deed to be accepted? Maybe it is dhikr, remembrance of Allah. Maybe it's this gathering of knowledge that we're in now. 
that we are offering as an act of worship for Allah to be pleased with us. What are the two conditions for Allah to accept it? One would be our intentions. Our intentions? Mm -hmm. Good. So our intentions should be what? Pure and That's correct. honest. Pure, honest. Noble. Noble. Sincere. Sincere. To the end of that line of thought. Good. So we have to have a ikhlas. We have to have sincerity. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. What's the second? It has to be in compliance with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Has to be in compliance with the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. So we have to be doing it for Allah's sake mm -hmm. and doing it a way that Allah wants us to do it. We have to have both. So if we understand this, when we take an act of worship, and we'll take prayer as an example, we have four possible scenarios. The first is what we've stated. The action is sincere for the sake of Allah, and it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet That's scenario one. Scenario two, this prayer that we are performing is sincere for the sake of Allah, but not in compliance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As you stated, Sallu kumara eitumun usalli Sallallahu Pray the way that you have seen me pray, not other than. Uh, three A person Is not sincere They don't have a khilas But they do it the way the prophet did it mm. they, 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 they don't have sincerity But they followed the prophet And how he did it They perform it the way that he did it Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The fourth scenario no ikhlas, no mutaba'ah. It's not sincerely for the sake of Allah, and it's not the way that the Prophet Sallallahu did it. No compliance, no adherence, no emulation. Any action that we are performing, any act of worship, is going to fall into one of these four categories. Of these four categories, which one of the four of them is the one that is accepted by Allah? The first one. The first one. Yeah. Good. Is it possible for the other three to be accepted by Allah in accordance with what we have from Revelation? Or from what we know of Revelation? I would think maybe all of them except the last one. Except the last one. Right. Okay. So the first one has ikhlas and mutaba'ah. These are the terms. We explained them. Right. But these are the terms. Ikhlas, sincerity, right. mutaba'ah. Right? Emulating the messenger. So I said. Right. Good. So the first one has ikhlas and mutaba'ah. The fourth one does not, it neither has ikhlas nor does it have mutaba'ah. Right. It has neither. Right. Good. So we're saying the first one definitely accepted. Right. The fourth one definitely rejected. Right. The middle two are just that in the middle. So that's, that's limbo. It's up to Allah's mercy. Up to Allah's mercy. Right. Okay, so let's look at the third one. A person is not doing it for the sake of Allah But they do it the way the Prophet Sallallahu did it. So they pray They stand The way the Prophet Sallallahu stood They bow, they make their back straight In rukur They make prostration On uh, Seven e extremities or seven bones How you like to translate that They do all of that But they're not doing it for the sake of Allah well, let's define that because, I mean, to not try to get real, real, real technical, uh. but you have you ever experienced the times when maybe Satan might be whispering in your ear or you might be tired? Sure. You might not really feel it, feel it. It's a natural But for the sake of Allah, you pray anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you do it in the fashion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Good. So would we say that prayer is not accepted? Well, the key to what you said is, you pray for the sake of Allah. Anyway. Anyway. Okay, I answered my own question. This now. person doesn't have a clause. Doesn't have sincerity. They're not praying for Allah's sake. They're praying for whatever reason they're making the prayer. Mm. 
Could be to be seen, could be to be praised. Oh, yeah. Mm. Right? As Allah states in Ma'un, Aradinuhum Yura'un, those who pray to be seen of others. Mm. Be the judge. What you think, Sheikh? What you got? <laughs> Only the first is accepted. Only the first is accepted. Okay. Okay, true. True. Okay. So the third one cannot be accepted because it's not for Allah's sake. Okay. Right? Well, my khalaqa to jinnah wa insa illa liya'budun. I'm not created the jinn and humanity except for the express intent of my worship alone. Right? Well, my umunu illa liya'budullah and mukhlisin allahu deen. Hunafa. And they're not ordered to accept. To make the religion sincerely for the sake of Allah, mm. right? Mm. Uh, to worship Allah alone sincerely, mm. right? As monotheists. Mm. Uh, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, Is it possible that maybe a person could maybe find themselves in that state, mm. but as they continue to pray and continue to form their prayer, mm -hmm. uh, maybe Allah could change their heart? Modify their intentions. Absolutely. And, okay, Absolutely. The, okay. the intention is something that is that is learned, that right. is developed, that right. is trained, that right. is cultivated. Right. As your faith increases. Right. As your faith increases. Right. You okay. have okay. from the ancient Muslim right. Sufian authority. Right. Good. I haven't treated anything that was more. I haven't mended anything that was more difficult for me than my intention. So certainly, I find that it turns on me. Right. right. And these are from the pious predecessors. Right. 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 Okay. You follow? All right. Okay. Good. We all on the same uh, page. So. One is accepted, four is not accepted, three is not, not accepted. accepted. Okay. We have to go to two. Right. Sincerity for the sake of Allah, no mutaba. Ikhlas, no mutaba. We're sincere, but we're not worshiping the way that the Prophet ﷺ worshipped. I'm going to modify my initial response. Two and three is not accepted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So why would two not be accepted? Because they're not doing it in the fashion that the Prophet has instructed us to do it. They're not doing it in the fashion that the Prophet has instructed us to do it. True. Why is that relevant? Are you serious? Why is it relevant? Why is that relevant? Yeah. A lot of Muslims, you know. Allah knows, this, Allah, Allah knows this in my heart. Allah, Allah, is, Allah is going to judge me. Yeah, but uh, in the Quran. In the Quran, yeah, actions are premised upon the intention. The first hadith that we covered. It's about my intention. Prophet Muhammad is the best example in all of our, uh, we're, we're obligated, we're ordered, we're um, obligated to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu so Alaihi Wasallam. Mm -hmm. That's just simple, clear cut. Mm -hmm. uh, Straightforward. Oh, ha. Okay. Al ha. <laughs> <laughs> May Allah preserve it in us. Tight. <laughs> So, Jihad, we're having a discussion, uh, Allah, may Allah preserve you, we're having a discussion concerning uh, the conditions for deeds to be accepted by Allah, which we know are ikhlas and mutabah, sincerity and emulation of the Prophet. Uh, we then came into that any action, any act of worship that we perform, there are four possible scenarios for that, for that deed. We're taking the example of salah, prayer. Any prayer that we pray is going to fall into one of these four categories. Any act of worship will fall into one of these four categories. First one, Ikhlas and mutaba, right? Uh, second one, ikhlas, no mutaba, right? Ikhlas, no mutaba. Third, no ikhlas, but we have mutaba. Fourth one, no ikhlas and no mutaba. We got it? No. Okay. So the question then becomes, uh, of these four. Which is the one that is accepted? Of course, the brother stated the first one and only the first one. The question then becomes why are the previous three not accepted by Allah? Right? So we understand if there's no ikhlas and no mutaba'a, why that's not accepted. Both conditions are not fulfilled. Right? Okay. No ikhlas but mutaba'a. Right? No sincerity, but we're doing it. We, we pray in the way the Prophet said and prayed. Okay, well, that is still, it's, they're not doing it for Allah's sake, so Allah's not going to accept it. They're doing it for other than Allah's sake. They're doing it for the sake of the creation, right? Uh, for whatever the reason is, to seem to be praised, whatever it may be, in order to get some benefit, somehow, being around the Muslims, whatever it may be, right? We mentioned the verse in Ma'un, Aradhinuhum Yura'un, right? Those who pray in order to be seen 
or praised by others, right? Uh, ostentatiousness, right, is the word for it, for riyah. Okay, good. So we, we're up to the second one now. The, the second one is the person is sincere. They're, they really are doing it for the sake of Allah. They're not doing it for the sake of the creation. They're, you know, in, the, in their spirituality, they're, they're in tune with that. But they're not doing it the way the Prophet ﷺ did it. They're not emulating the Prophet, following him, in alignment with him, and how they did it. So we said, this deed is also not accepted. Question is why? Why would something that's being done sincerely for the sake of Allah not be accepted by Allah? Um, I would say the verse where Allah says, say to them, if you uh, love me, then if you love Allah, then follow me. Mm-hmm. Uh, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Mm-hmm. Good. Kul in kumtum to Ibn Allah. That proves it to be a condition. Uh huh. That has to be met. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. So the verse, the verse is in uh, Ali Imran, right? Okay. Say to them, if you truly love Allah, right? Fatabiruni, yuhibbukum Allah, yuhibbukum dunubukum, right? Say to them, O Muhammad, if you truly love Allah, meaning zaman, the way that you claim. Uh, the verse is called Ayatul Mihna, right? The, the verse of examination. If you truly love Allah, the way that you claim, then follow me, emulate me. In exchange, Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. Right? Okay, good. Um, if a person is truly sincere, if the person is truly concerned about Allah, if the person is truly concerned about their worship, and worship is what Allah loves, doing what Allah loves, then we'll be concerned with what Allah loves. And our Lord is telling us that what he loves is for us to emulate the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning in our, in our worship, right? So the two are integrally connected. So far, so good? Okay. Um, There's a statement of scholarship that states, Laysa shatan in tuhib, walakin is shatan in tuhib. The focal point of the matter is not to love, but rather the focal point of the matter is to be loved. Right? The focus is not that, is not that you love. The focus is for you to be loved. Love. You have to love. You have to love a lot. But everyone loves Allah. Muslim, non-Muslim, person of Christian faith, person of Jewish faith, everyone, everyone loves Allah. So then if everyone loves Allah, what is the point of distinction between them? The point of distinction, those that Allah loves them. Those that Allah loves them. We have to have love of Allah. It is because of our love for Allah that places us upon the Surat al-Mustaqim. We ask Allah, you know, Surat al-Mustaqim, ask Allah to guide us the straight path. It is because of love that we are placed upon that path, because of our love of Allah. But what's the point of distinction? How do we achieve Allah's love of us? By following his guidance and his instructions. By following his guidance and his instruction. How are we receiving his guidance and his instruction? Through the word of Allah, through the Quran, the Holy Quran. Good, through the Quran. How do we? How are we get in the Quran? Say that again. How are we receiving the Quran? How, how do we get it? Who who gave it to us? Who transmitted it to us? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it goes back. Right. It goes back. So sincerity alone by itself is not enough because if we are truly sincere, we will have concern for how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it. If we are <coughs> truly sincere and if we truly love Allah, then we will love that which Allah loves. And Allah loves His Messenger and Allah loves that we emulate Him in our acts of worship. We see how it connects? Yes. Okay, good. Um, what we need to understand though is that ultimately this is from our perspective and it is that which we 
uh, have the ability to interpret and may have to act upon in accordance with what is apparent to us. In reality, in reality, meaning from the affairs of the unseen, the, in the reality, whose right is it concerning who's forgiven and who's not forgiven? Allah. Allah. Whose right is it to determine who's entered into paradise and who isn't? Allah. His right. Whose right is it of who he loves and who he does not love? Allah. Good. So even though the deed itself, the deed as an independent entity, we cannot say it is accepted by Allah. No, can't. But if Allah chooses out of his mercy to forgive the person, to reward the person for their sincerity, to guide them because of their sincerity, to allow them to enter into paradise, that is all the realm of Allah. That is all his realm. That's not us. <coughs> we follow? Right. But from where we stand, we have to work upon what is apparent. And from what is premise and revelation, this is what we have. Does that make sense? Now, I say that for this reason. Many of the Muslims who may be in error or many of the Muslims who may not be as in alignment with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as they should or as they could, they actually are sincere and they actually love Allah, they love Islam, they're trying to do the right thing, they just may not know what the right thing actually is or have access proper access to what the right thing is, or it's not being delivered to them in a, fast, in a fashion that is palatable for them. Lack of knowledge and understanding. Lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, and at times, lack of proper presentation. Mm -hmm. You follow? Mm -hmm. So if we understand that properly, then in these situations, we strive to utilize what they do have to bring them to where they need to be. So we utilize their sincerity, we utilize their love of Allah to bring them into compliance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, that's the method that is employed with this type of person, right? The first position or the first posture uh, should not be one of hubris, right? Should not be one of contempt, should not be one of any of that, right? That's not step one. Right? Uh, step one will be what we stated. Moving forward. If sincerity is lost, the action is not accepted. Due to the statement of Allah, the mighty and majestic, and we turn to whatever they have performed of deeds, and we made it as though it was scattered dust. And his statement, the exalted in the hadith al Qudsi, in the holy hadith, or if you like the hadith al Ilahi, the divine hadith. And Agna Shuraka and a shirk. Men Amin Amin, Ashuraka Fihi, Mai Gayri, Taraktu, Ashuraka. I am fully independent of any partners and any employment of shirk, any employment of polytheism. Whoever performs a deed and associates a partner with me uh, in it by way of other than me then I have abandoned this individual and their shirk and their worship of the creation. Collected by Muslim. If ittiba, if emulation of the Prophet wasallam is lost, the deed is rejected. Due to the statement of the Prophet wasallam, Whoever innovates into this affair of ours, that which is not from it, shall have it rejected. Collected by Al-Bukhari, as well as by Muslim. And in a Wordage of Muslim Whoever performs an action That is not from this affair of ours Shall have it rejected So the first hadith The first sentence It is broader uh, Or excuse me The second sentence is broader than the first Whoever innovates into this affair of ours, that's the individual who performs the action of, of innovation into the religion. 
As for the second hadith, the second sentence, من عمنا عمنا, whoever performs an action. So whoever performs an action, this is much broader <coughs> than the person who initiated that innovated act. So we have the person that innovates the act, and then we have anyone else who does the act. In either scenario, the Prophet Sallallahu is stating, فَهُوَ رَدٌ That it is rejected. It is rejected. رَدْ بِمَعْنَى مَرْدُود Right? أَسَدْ بِمَعْنَى مَسْدُود This is the meaning here. That it is, that it is blocked and it is returned back to the sender. Right? As we would say. Uh, this hadith, though, it states this affair of ours. Whoever innovates into this affair of ours, uh, that is not from it. Whoever performs an action in this affair of ours, that is not from it. What is this affair of ours in this hadith? What does it mean? The deen. The deen. It means Islam. Yeah. So whoever innovates into Islam, yeah. that which is not from it, will have it rejected. Right. Whoever performs an action that's not from Islam, right. will have it rejected. So how do we know what actions are or are not from Islam? By way of the Prophet Sallallahu boy of his sunnah, boy of his seerah. This is why the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is relevant. This is why the seerah, the biographical account of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu is relevant. They're both very relevant. This is how we know what Islam is and what Islam isn't. So now a person prays and they pray however they feel like praying or uh, wherever they get their form of prayer from that's not congruent with the way the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed. This hadith is telling us that that prayer would be rejected. rejected. Okay. The explainer states, as for what is connected to the prayer, zakah, fasting, and hajj, the prayer, the annual almsgiving, fasting in the month of Ramadan, and the major pilgrimage to Mecca, then the details concerning this will come in the hadith of Ibn Umar, Buini and Islam ala khamsin. Islam is built upon five. This is the third hadith, of course. We are now in the second hadith, the hadith of Jibreel. His statement in the hadith, Qara Sadaqta, because now the question has been, has been answered. Jibreel comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he states, فَخْبِرْنِي عَنَ الْإِسْلَامِ Ya Muhammad, فَخْبِرْنِي عَنَ الْإِسْلَامِ O Muhammad, inform me about Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then tells him what Islam is by way of explaining the five pillars of Islam, as we call them. As we call them. Uh, it's important that we understand, we commonly say, the pillars of Islam, the pillars of Iman, right? Arkan of Islam, Arkan of Iman, Arkan of Salah, the pillars of the prayer. We say that. Uh, that wordage, pillars, does not come in a verse or a hadith relative to Islam, Iman, or Salah. Mm. So, where does it come from? Wow. Why is that relevant? Even the hadith of Jibreel, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, when he's answering the question of Jibreel informing about Islam, he mentions what we call the pillars of Islam, but the word pillar's not there. Um, so why is the word there? Uh, I would say, based on the, the, the definition of a pillar, mm -hmm. it's something that... Uh, Holds up something, something that is the main tenet that holds up uh, something else. Something that holds that, up something else. Uh huh. That, that it needs to be there, or everything else won't mm -hmm. be there, basically. Okay, Network good. Pillar. So, mm -hmm. good. Those, those things that Islam is uh, constructed of. If you don't have one of those things, then you don't have it. Mm -hmm. You don't have all of them, basically. Okay, good. Um, the answer to the first question is, or the question, there's another question coming. Um, this is something that has been established over the centuries by scholarship in order to, uh, in order so that the, the Muslims at large and disciples of knowledge in particular can better uh, decipher and better categorize knowledge and better categorize knowledge better comprehend knowledge 
You follow? Um, with time, ignorance increases. And people become more distant from the purity of knowledge. Why? Because uh, chronologically, we're more distant from the source of revelation itself. Mm. We follow? Mm -hmm. We are quickly approaching 1,500 years after mm -hmm. revelation began. Mm -hmm. So our, our exactness, mm -hmm. our precision in understanding and operating with the text is, is, is not as precise as the companion's understanding of the text. Because they were present and they were witnessing revelation. And it was in their language, mm -hmm. not just in their not just in their mother tongue, but even in their their dialect and their colloquial language. You follow? The events that were occurring that gives the verses in hadith context, they were experiencing that. If they did a certain thing, past revelation would descend concerning the thing that they did or they said. So they understood that better. We don't have that. You follow? Right? When you and I do something, there's no, no verse that's, that's coming down. If they had a question about something, they could ask the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly, not us. You follow? Mm -hmm. So because of that, one, the companions are, are utilized as a guideline for proper context of the text. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, two, in, scho in scholarship, in maintaining that throughout generations, they, they, they seek to um, better explain... To, to categorize and to present Islam in a fashion that, uh, that the remainder of the populace can, can, digest, can digest. So because of this, even though the books were fewer, the further you go back to the time of the ancient Muslims, uh, the words and the explanation <coughs> was less. Why? Because they understood it. They didn't have to ask about it as much as we have to ask about it. We have more words now, more books now, seemingly more information now, because it requires more and more explanation as time progresses. Does all that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is a pillar? A rukin mahir to shade. It is the essence of a thing itself. That without that essence, you no longer have that thing. Right? For example, the, the, what we call life inside of the human body. Uh... The signature of life in the human body is what? The heart. The heart? The soul. Good, it's the soul. It's the soul, right? Because you have numerous people that their hearts are beating, but they still will pull the plug on them, right. right? Because what they will say is they can't determine that consciousness is still present in the individual, Right? But what they are calling consciousness is actually the soul, mm -hmm. right? It's actually the soul. Good. So the essence of the human being, the essence of life within the human being is the soul. Death is actually what? The departing of the soul. When the soul exits from the body. Right. That is what death is. Mm -hmm. To the exclusion of that, there are many people that many things happen to them that we think that they should have died. But the soul didn't exit from the body, so they continue to live. Mm -hmm. Other side of the spectrum, there are many people that we see nothing that's really wrong with them. We have no justification why they passed, but the soul exited from the body. You follow? Mm -hmm. Good. So, a pillar is the essence of a thing itself. Without the essence, you no longer have that thing. Uh, likewise, this building. The pillars, as you mentioned earlier, they are holding up the building. They are the essence of of the building, right? You take the pillars out, what becomes of the building? Collapse. The building collapses, right? The building collapses. Excellent. Uh, likewise, the pillars of Islam. These are the pillars that, he hold, that are holding up, not Islam itself, because the religion is perfect, Allah is not in need of us, but your Islam, your belief in Islam, your practice of Islam. These are the pillars that hold up your Islam. If these pillars are removed from you in your life, or you choose, you opt to remove them from your life, then your Islam collapses. You follow that? Okay. We're going to close um, 
No, we're past our time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will take the companions, uh, their perception and response to Jibreel alayhi salam. When he hears this, he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, Sadaqta, you've spoken the truth. So we're going to examine the response of the companions when he said that next week, inshallah ta'ala. Hadha wa lahu alam sallallahu alayhi wa